What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner. And nobody knows the troubles I see. Nobody knows my sorrows. Rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for the carry me home. Yeah. Right now, I'm in the mood for old Negro spirituals because of the results of the election. However, not all is lost. My philosophy is this. So what? Now what? That's my, one of my slogans. So what? Now what? Another one of them is play the next play. Meaning this. One time in, in, in high school, when I had the juice, I had a game coming up. And I was trying to show off from my little girlfriend who played, went to the other school. Well, first play of the game, I fumbled the ball. Coach called me over to the sideline. He said, listen, son, that play is over. Can never do it again. What you need to do is play the next play. Focus on that, because when you start looking back, that's when you get trapped in the past and you can't perform in the future. That's what we got to do now as the conservative movement as Republicans, a lot of our Republican voters, for whatever reason, uh, failed to realize the sheer evil of the Democratic Party. And uh, as they say, we want more checks and balances in, in government. But when you're dealing with a side that doesn't care about checks and balances, this never fails. You know, it's about to be a check and a balance in a minute with my neighbor who every time I come out to make a video, there he goes, you know, firing up the dang on chainsaw like the chainsaw massacre. Anyway, um, so getting back to what I was saying, I hope y'all can hear me over the loud chainsaw, whatever it is. What is he riding, a dirt bike? So anyway, when you have a whole party that their goal and objective is not to just have checks and balances, but it is to completely disrupt, destroy, uh, and hinder the other party just for political gain, then then no, you can't give power to a group like that. So they won the House, and of course they're happy about it. And President Trump gave an amazing press conference today, handling the press. I'm talking, he was beating them up, like just straight speed bags, heavy bags, giving them heavy blows. And one thing he did today that was genius, he, he said that Nancy Pelosi deserves to be the Speaker of the House. Now what does that do? First thing it does is all of the little minions that was coming along thinking like, wow, we got to distance ourselves from Nancy Pelosi and tell everybody, if you elect us, we're not supporting Nancy. Now you got divide and the camp. And see, Trump is like, okay, if I got to deal with somebody, I'd rather deal with an old head who at the end of the day, know the game, know the rules versus a new, hot, young, zealous person to get in and they want to prove a point but it also creates that, that tension amongst them when Trump supports her and says, well, you know what, I'd have loved to stop her. I couldn't. And so now I'm looking forward to working with her. She, I mean, she did a great job. She worked hard. She deserves it. Now, when it's time to decide who's going to be the Speaker of the House uh, and, and they start going against her, do you disavow Trump's uh, support of you? Is he, he supporting you because what? Do you guys have some type of side deal? It would be a lot of tension within the Democrat camp. Plus, if Nancy becomes Speaker of the House again, I'm sure she's going to be remembering every one of them that was like, you let you elect me, I will not support Nancy Pelosi. But anyway, when we look at the election from yesterday, there was so much going on, and I'm going to be talking about a lot of that tonight on my live radio blog talk show and live in Kevin's Corner on Facebook, uh, YouTube. But man, some of the highlights. First things first. I'm so glad Andrew Gillum took it to the chin. And I'm also so glad that, uh, so let's see, Florida remains Republican, Texas, another one, Georgia, another one. And it goes to show that all of the support from the elites and, and, and the major iconic liberals, that still does not have enough staying power, enough clout, to sway the opinions of just 
good hardcore Americans because we're thinking, so you bring Oprah in and we're supposed to be wooed. And see, that's the problem with the left. They like to present shiny things to voters, not substance, shiny things. And see, when people can't let go of shiny things, that's how they get sucked in, they get trapped in. I'm gonna give you an example before I let you go. You know how the zookeeper would catch a monkey when it got out the zoo? Here's the secret, see monkeys, uh-oh, well let me, before I get into the monkey story, okay? I'm not talking about, here's my disclaimer, I'm not talking about black people, okay? I'm talking about a, just a, a scenario. I'm talking about an analogy so people can understand why not to get caught up in the silver shiny things, okay? For all of those who take everything literally. Uh, but anyway, so the way the zookeeper catches the monkey is that he knows the monkey's weakness, and let me lean in, because if monkeys hear this, they're gonna be mad that I told a secret. Okay, monkeys, they got a thing for glitter. So what would happen is, the monkey would get out, and, and the zookeeper know the monkey's out in the trees somewhere, so he would take an hourglass, set it out in the middle of the field, and drop a whole bunch of glitter down in the bottom of the hourglass. So now you got the monkey in the tree checking out the glitter. And he's like, whoo, 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 whoo. <laughs> and then he comes sneaking over to the glitter and ain't nobody around. But at the bottom of the hourglass is a rope tied to it. And so the monkey ain't even paying attention to the rope. <clears throat> so he stick his little monkey hand down to get the glitter. And you know you got to get the tight hand to get through the, the bottleneck. See, so, you know, a little tight hand goes in, opens the hand, grabs the glitter. What does he create? A fist. Now he goes to pull the hand out, but it won't get back out to the, uh, the, the bottleneck. So instead of the monkey letting go of the glitter and pulling his hand out, the monkey starts fighting with it. He's like, man, I gotta hang on to this glitter. And not realizing in the bushes, the zookeeper got the rope and he just starts pulling the monkey on over and the monkey's holding on to the shiny stuff, not realizing that he is being sucked in and trapped because he got distracted by the glitter. And the Democratic Party has been doing that to their voters for years, making them focus on the glitter. Let's send Obama, let's send Oprah, let's get Will Ferrell to go door to door. Let's get Hollywood to make personal phone calls. And they were still getting their butts beat in the Senate. Now, I'm very, very excited about what the Senate has done. A lot of these confirmations hopefully can go through. We might be able to get some more Supreme Justices to get pushed through. But the one thing that the Democratic Party and I'm banking on them doing this. <sighs> when you have somebody who is just bitter and they want revenge, there, there's really, there's not much you can do to get them to cooperate peacefully. As much as some of those people in the party might say, look y'all, we need to calm down, do this the right way. We got our power back in this, in this, this particular branch. Let's just focus on progress so we at least in 2020, be able to say, we didn't just waste time arguing, fighting, jamming up the president this whole time. We did stuff, but no, they're not gonna do that. You know what they're gonna do? They're gonna have loose cannons like Maxine Waters, who's gonna be going crazy talking about, it's my turn to get some revenge now. Water is off the hook, you know, and you're gonna have people who gonna get out of control and they're gonna be talking about impeachment. They're gonna be dragging out all types of unnecessary investigations. And then all those people who, for whatever reason, forget the true nature of the Democrats and didn't come out to vote or voted opposite, they're gonna wake up again and say, what have we done? By putting them back in power, they have single-handedly stopped progress or undone everything that has already been done. And then 2020, as Trump was saying during the um, interview today, all he's gonna do is just go, hey, y'all saw, y'all saw how they acted for the last two years. So now, what y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna vote these knuckleheads back in or what? So they're gonna do it. They're gonna ruin themselves. That is just what they do. They're gonna shoot themselves right in their big fat feet. Now, in closing, okay, so they won the house, but did they have to have the, the, the worst of the Legion of Doom that survived? I mean, you got the top knuckleheads Pelosi Menendez I don't know how in the world that man made it back in Waters Mad Max off the leash still running around and she's really off the leash now she's off both leashes she's off of, of, of the Democrat release she's I mean leash she's off of the Republic 
can leave. She's just everywhere. She's just going to be running around attacking everybody. Como and Warren, a.k.a. Pocahontas. All of them. They made it through. The Legion of Doom. The worst of the worst. You know, and hopefully somebody will grab them under the collar, pull them close and say, now look, y'all better not mess this up for us. But no, no, they're going to mess it up. They always do. That's just the nature of the Democrats. So anyway, yeah, we got the, uh, the Senate and we're going to still make it happen. We're going to still play the next play. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to move forward as much as I hated that because I didn't want to even have to go through the Democrats. That was my whole thing. I, I just I really, really wish <laughs> that more people would have just been more aware of the bigger problems that is going to come with the Democratic Party being in any power, period. But anyway, it is what it is. Let's continue to fight and go from there. All right. Check out my show tonight, 730. Also, find me on Facebook. Find me on Twitter. And check out Extreme Tees, my sponsor. Love their paraphernalia. I'm telling you, it's great. Um, you can find that link in the bottom. And also, if you want to support Kevin and Kevin's Corner, there's a link in the bottom to do that as well. And we will see you next time in Kevin's Corner. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. We're running up on 100,000 subscribers. And we're going to have a good time. Celebrate good times. Come on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, where's John Travolta? He made that famous. Yeah. See, in the 80s, 70s, you can just get away with one move like that. People say, oh, God, he's so hot. Look, he's pointing up and down. Who? that is so sexy, girl. You know, yeah, easy stuff. Or this one. How about that one? Yeah, that was an old move. Oh, my God, he's just rolling his hands back. That is, oh, look, he's so sexy. Or, or this one. Oh, he's imitating drowning. Oh, that is, girl, is he swimming? That is the hottest dance ever. Yeah, those were good times. Twist, everything. Come on, baby. Anyway, God bless. See you next time in Kevin's Corner.